Hello everyone, welcome back to Venus in Virtue where we create change using mindful magic. Today I wanted to do a fun video about um, easy tools that any um, beginner witch or um, person looking to begin their witchy practice um, can use. And all of these items I've planned out to be either very budget friendly or things that you may even already have in your home that you can use to start your practice. Um, this can also be useful if you are in the broom closet and want to start a practice but aren't necessarily comfortable sharing that with others just yet. Um, again, all of these things are designed to sort of either be things that you already have in your home so they can be very inconspicuous um, and they're pretty budget friendly as well. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. The first tool that I would recommend anyone looking to start their practice is a journal. So for this, you just need a notebook of any sort and a pen or pencil. Um, you can also create a digital journal or notebook if that is something that is easier for you or if you already have access to. Um, does not have to be a sort of witchy themed one like this at all. It can be a composition notebook. It can be, you know, any notebook you have lying around um, or any pieces of paper that you can put into a binder. Um, my grimoire or book of shadows is actually in a purple binder. Um, that just makes it a little bit easier for me to organize, but it's also, you know, inconspicuous. It's not super um, telling unless you really look at it. Of course, I've decorated mine to have all sorts of witchy things on it, um, which I do have a video of a walkthrough of my grimoire, so definitely check that out. I'll leave that in the description box below. But the reason I would say that the number one tool would be a journal is to document. Um, you know, you can take notes in here, write down what is important to you in your practice. If you're really interested in herbs, you can write down all the herbs and their correspondences. If you are more into crystals, you can, you know, write those down or even draw them. If you're more creative, you can print pictures, use stickers. There's so much that you can do with just a notebook. And I definitely recommend this, if, especially if you're just starting out, because finding out what information strikes you and writing it down is one, a great way to help remember it, um, but it's also a way to figure out, you know, what you like. Because um, you might write something down and, you know, decide, you know, that's not really something that I want to incorporate in my practice. But just having it around and writing it down and having information readily available is very important, I would say. So you can also use it as a diary. Like there's so much that you can do with just a journal whether that is um, sort of creating your own little textbook, which is how I use my grimoire, or as a journal, which is how I use this one, or, you know, however you want to use it, whatever strikes your fancy, and that's really the fun of it, is you can be as simple or as creative as you want. You know, you can go all out with scrapbooking and washi tape and stickers and markers, or it can just be, you know, a pen and paper. It's whatever suits your practice. So, journal and pen is my number one witchy tool that I would recommend. Let's see, which one do I want to do next? I will do... Okay, let's do this next. So, I would say candles, and I have a bunch of different kinds here. I'm going to lay this one up. This is a um, seven-day candle that I just got at my local dollar store. It um, was like a buck fifty, and it just had, you know, the little sticker on it, and I took that off. Um, I definitely recommend white candles, at least to start out with, um, just because that is the most basic and white can really be used for any sort of intention that you do have. I do plan on making a video about color theory and intention and candle magic, so keep your eyes open for that. But for starters and beginners, I mean, you can find a white candle pretty much anywhere. You can even thrift them. Um, I just happened to be at my local dollar store and picked this one up for a buck fifty. 
and this is a seven day candle so it will last a very very long time um, I also have a couple different sizes uh, of um, pillar candles even like birthday candles you can do all sorts of things um, this one here that I have burning is a really wide pillar candle so I keep that on my altar all the time and like to burn it when I'm working just to sort of set ambiance but also connect with um, any deity that I'm trying to work with at that time. Um, and again, all of these are white candles except my little birthday candle. I didn't have an all white one. But again, with color, you can add intention just with color alone. And that is a really simple way. Um, so yellow could promote, you know, joy, happiness, um, even manifestation. The other birthday candles I had in that pack were like pink, green, and blue. So pink could be self-love and love for others. Green is great for money magic and um, manifestation as well. Blue is great for emotional work or thoughts and communication. So even something as simple as a colored candle, don't even have to, you know, carve it or add in the herbs, color alone is a great way to infuse it with your intention. Um, so candles are definitely another low budget, um, inconspicuous tool that I would recommend for beginners as well. Okay, next let's talk about herbs. Um, so when you are starting out, if you're interested in doing, let's say a candle spell, for a new job. Let's say you want to, um, you're looking for a new job and you want to do a candle spell to sort of assist you with that. You can use a green candle or a white candle, like I mentioned, but you may also see different spells that talk about different herbs that you can incorporate as well. Um, just like white candles can be used for any sort of colored candle that you're looking to use. Like if you don't have access to, you know, yellow, green, or blue, a white candle can substitute for that. Same thing with herbs and rosemary. Um, rosemary is great for cleansing and it's an all around really good herb to use. Another one I believe is um, basil. Um, so I just grabbed some of the ones that I had in my pantry because, you know, you don't have to go out and buy all the fancy herbs. You may have some in your pantry already that you can use. Um, these are just a couple examples of ones that I would use. Um, you can use bay. Um, I do have some cinnamon sticks. Or if you are dressing a candle, you can use, you know, um, ground cinnamon. I definitely want to put out a word of caution to be very careful if you are using herbs um, in... A candle spell or with any fire magic please be careful with herbs I do not recommend using whole herbs um, just because they can catch fire so please make sure that you keep fire safety as top priority when using any sort of um, fire for magic um, so I always like ground up my herbs and I use very very little when I do dress a candle um, so bay is great for manifestation and money magic. Cinnamon is great for, um, self-love. Let me just double check my grimoire because it's been a little while since I've used some herbs in my magic and I don't want to tell you guys the wrong thing. And this is why it's important to write things down. <laughs> so let me just bring this out. Okay, so for Bay, I have Success, Wisdom, and Divination. Um, for Cinnamon, I have Success, Action, Love, and Lust. So I definitely see Cinnamon as like a self-love, but it's got a little spice to it, right? So I always like to think of herbs as, you know, the mundane first. How would you use Cinnamon? Well, you use it in sort of fall and like wintry, you know, food or beverages. It's very comforting, but it has that bit of spice, that little bit of kick to it. So think about the emotions that make you think of that. And 
that is why I wrote, you know, success, action, love, and lust for cinnamon, because it just is emotions that you might already feel using this herb every day. So it's not necessarily different in magic as well. Um, and the same with bay leaves, you know, I've always, a very common one that I've seen is, you know, writing a wish on a bay leaf and then burning it. Again, fire safety, be careful. <laughs> but that is, you know, a very common practice that I've seen even in non-witchy um, homes. And, you know, they're added to the... Um, Oh, what are they called? Like the big pots, like the stove cleansing pots where you put a bunch of like cinnamon, citrus, and then they'll write words on bay leaves and add those in. So it is manifesting that success with whatever you write down on the bay leaf. Um, let's see, pepper is, so again, thinking about the mundane first, it's very, very spicy and it has a kick. So very spicy herbs are great for banishing as well as protection. So that is what I have in my grimoire for black pepper. And these are whole peppers. So this is great if you're using, um, if you're making like a spell bag or a spell jar, um, whole herbs or like whole pepper or whole cloves are great for that too. But again, if you're dressing a candle, please use ground herbs and I would recommend using very little to start out with. So those are just, you know, very um, basic herbs that I just had in my pantry that I just grabbed, you know, two minutes before I started filming just to kind of talk about their magical properties. Um, but rosemary is good. I just don't have any of that on hand. But that is a great overall herb that's great for cleansing, protection, healing. And I also have memory written in my notes here too. So when in doubt, use a white candle. When in doubt, you can use rosemary in, as a substitute for any herb. So, and you might have a bunch of these already in your pantry, so definitely see what you have. Um, you know, ground cinnamon, um, even, like basil, you know, things that you probably cook with already can also be used for magic too. So that is candles and that is herbs. Next, I'll talk about another... Um, all rounder. So clear quartz is a great crystal that can be used in substitute for any others. So if you are interested in crystals and their magical properties, um, clear quartz is a great one to start out with, you know, really sort of getting to know the energy of a clear quartz. Um, again, with crystals, not everyone is going to be drawn to using crystals. So if you are not feeling drawn to use crystals in your practice, there's, you know, no need to. I would definitely recommend only doing what you feel called to do. I have, you know, a decent handful of crystals that I like to use for different things. I know other people that don't have any, and I know other people that have, you know, hundreds. It's really all about what speaks to you because this is your practice so but if you are interested in crystals and um are trying to um stay in the broom closet for a bit or you know are can only get one and you're looking for one to get i would recommend clear quartz again same with um excuse me same with candles color theory does play a role on crystals too so they can be aligned with the chakras. That is a good sort of beginner way to think about it. So um, how the chakras are aligned and those colors. Um, but again, you know, think about pink, rose quartz, that is love and love for others and self-love. Blue crystals most of the time are great for communication and um, amethyst like purple, that's really good for divination. So color theory has a huge role in magic, um, and I do plan to do a couple other videos about that too. But for beginners, if you are trying to be a thrifty witch or, you know, low budget or are stuck in the broom closet for now, and you really do want to work with a crystal, clear quartz is a great way to go. 
and even the shape of them have different meanings. So most of my crystals are towers like this, where they're flat on the bottom and have a point on top. So those are great for directing energy. So I like to think of them, and you can think of it either way. I don't think either one is necessarily wrong. So for me, I like to use these towers with one point. Ooh, knocking my camera. I really like to use these with my tarot decks. Um, so I will often use them to cleanse a deck. I will put the flat side on the deck and it is directing energy both outward and into the deck from this point. And it's a great way to cleanse without needing to really do anything. It is also, you know, it's a weight, so I don't knock my cards around as easily. But it's, um, it's a very simple way to cleanse your cards, keep them in one place. And with the shape, you know, I also have, like, this Labradorite can just as easily be put there. And it's just a smoother energy because it's this smoother shape. So the shape of your crystal also does play a role as well. Um, so I don't think there's any wrong way to go with, if you're just getting a clear quartz, you know, you can get a tower, you can get a double pointed, you can get, you know, a um, palm stone. It's really whatever speaks to you. But if you're looking for just one crystal, I would say clear quartz is the way to go. Next witchy item that you may already have around your home is containers. And so I have a bowl as well as a jar here. Now I also do have this little um, spell jar that I got in a um, giveaway that I won. It came with a bunch of herbs and um, things like that and it came with a spell jar. So I do like to use these for spells but these may not be as common so I didn't want to um, harp on these too too much but you can absolutely use these if you have them. The big part about mindful magic is using what you have and you know not feeling like you do have to go out and buy all of these very specific tools. So with bowls like this one here you know I use this for offerings, I will use this um, you could even use bowls for water scrying if that is something that interests you. Um, I also use this, I mean, predominantly for offerings, but right now I also use it in the center of my home as a container for a home protection spell jar that I've made. And I keep that in the middle with other like crystals or you can use herbs around it um, that can um, also be used for protection. So I think bowls are a great way and, you know, you can find really cool ones in the thrift store. You know, this one, I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, but it has like wheat on the side. So I got this um, when I was working with Freya, because that is one of, um, one of her associations is wheat. And um, yeah, I just felt drawn to get this one and it was like 75 cents. But you don't even have to go out and get a new bowl. You can just use one that you have in your home. So bowls are great, as well as jars. Um, they have mason jars that are even smaller than this, which can be great for larger spell magic. Um, or spell jar magic, rather. So one of this size, you know, you could use for a very large protection spell in your home. Um, I just didn't have anything smaller on hand, you know, but even these spice ones, when, like, when you run out of spice, save these guys. You can reuse them for spell magic. And, I mean, any container with a lid, you can also um, use this to store water and make moon water out of it. You can use these to store any herbs that you work with a lot. Like, let me get my, oh. I have another jar that I use for my crushed eggshells. So definitely, definitely, definitely 
keep any jars or closed containers that you have lying around. Um, they're great for magic, they're great for just all sorts of different things, and you probably have way more than you think. So you don't need a fancy little jar, you can just use anything that you already have. Let's see what else. Oh yes. Um, so th if you're interested in divination, um, one of the most common ways to divine is with tarot. But if you um, live in an area where, you know, tarot is a little bit more taboo or aren't comfortable reading tarot in front of other people, a great way to do that is playing cards. So this does not have the same number of cards as a tarot deck. This is predominantly the minor arcana. Um, but there's also two jokers which can be substituted for fool cards. Um, now I do know that um, some people who read playing cards have a completely different system. Um, but you can, if you would like to, use the tarot associations and sort of use that in a playing card deck. So for example, clubs would be wands. So the three of wands would be the three of clubs. Um, let's see, spades would be swords. Hearts would be cups. And diamonds would be pentacles. So we still have our four suits. Oh, and then the joker is um, like the fool. Now, I am still very new to reading playing cards. So for now, I do just sort of use the tarot meaning um, until I get more resources for myself to learn a different way to read playing cards. Um, a big thing about my personal practice is I love getting all sorts of references and then just using whatever resonates with me. So I don't like to use just one system for a bunch, like for um, a good example is candle magic. So if let's say I'm trying to do that new job spell. I am not the kind of person who will just find one and use that spell to a T. I will instead look up many, many, many different new job spells or, you know, job magic, whatever you want to call it. I will look up at least like five if I can find that many different ones and sort of pick and choose my favorite pieces of those spells and make my own. And it's also a lot of fun that way. Um, and it also is more meaningful because I'm using the pieces that resonate with me the most. And when you do that, you know, it just makes for stronger magic. So if you're interested in divination, um, specifically tarot, you can absolutely use a regular playing card deck to do that. And chances are you might have one of these around your home. If not, you know, I got a two pack for like three bucks. Um, so they're very inexpensive and easily accessible as well. So this is um, one form. Another is pendulum magic. Now I do have a pendulum. Um, I don't use it a lot, but something that I like to use instead is, you know, really anything that can like dangle. Like you can use car keys, you can use a necklace, you can use a piece of string. Um, anything that you can sort of hold and have something hang from, you can use as a pendulum. It does not have to be a specific kind of crystal. It does not have to like have any charms on it, you know, because divination is, you are the vessel. You are the one reading this message. So sure, you can use these as tools, but the tool does not make the magic. You make the magic. 
So you can use, you know, a piece of string with an old key on it that you don't know what it unlocks anymore. <laughs> um, you can use like anything with like a point, like you could use a bobby pin on a string. You could use, you know, you, you see where, where I'm getting at? Um, you can use lots of different things if you are interested in pendulum magic, but don't have access to one. Like if you don't have a metaphysical store near you, or, you know, again, are trying to remain in the broom closet for a little while, um, there are a bunch of different ways that you can craft a pendulum and use that instead. So that is another form of divination. And let me see, is there anything else that I brought today? I think that's it. I think that's all I have for you guys today. Um, so we talked about journaling and documenting um, the parts of magic that you want to learn. We talked about candles that are pretty easy to access. We've talked about um, herbs that you probably already have in your pantry. We talked about crystals, if that's something you're interested in. We've talked about containers and we've talked about divination. So, oh, I guess the other sort of thing that you don't even really, um, it's not like a physical tool, um, but the internet, you know, it's a great, great resource and it's where I got a lot of my information starting out. It's how I built the basis of my grimoire and my practice was just looking up a bunch of different stuff. I mean, Pinterest is honestly a pretty good resource. Um, and you know, there's books. If you have a library near you, I definitely recommend seeing if they have any sort of pagan or witchy books. Um, you might be surprised. I was surprised to find that my local library had a pretty good selection, um, where I lived before I live here currently. Um, but you know, I was surprised, like, they had a book on runes and a book on, like, spells, and I was really surprised. So, definitely check out your local library. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is really my biggest recommendation is research and looking things up and sort of testing it out. You know, see what works, see what doesn't, see what pieces of a spell work for you and what pieces don't. And that's the fun of magic, is figuring it out and having that connection between yourself and the earth or yourself and something greater than yourself. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you think of anything that I may have missed, um, please leave a comment down below. I will definitely try to pin it. And I want to thank you guys so much for your continued support. It means the world to me. And before you go, please remember, you matter. You are loved, and you can make a difference. Bye, friends.